Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hank. This is episode 56. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hank. That's H Y M P E. It's Hank. It's not hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building for episode 56. Introduce yourself to the audience. Hey, audience. This is Africa from Dating 101. Be More Edition based in Baltimore, Maryland. Hit me up on Instagram, Dating 101. Be More Edition. Copy that. International hype is not just a hashtag. It is a way of life. As I've told y'all before, Baltimore is becoming a hub. A lot of love in Baltimore. A lot of love in Detroit, too. Shout out to them two cities. All right. Let's hit the rundown. Custom Hustle. Custom Hustle is my clothing line. We do custom jerseys, custom jackets. We got the sweatsuits and now the t-shirts. That's at Custom Hustle World on Instagram and Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. H2H Cleaning is my cleaning company. That is at H2H Cleaning on Instagram. That is a tri-state area situation, but if you make it worth my while, I will slide. Uh, let's go through the radio rundowns now. E-Block Radio Network. Every Monday on the E-Block Radio Network at 2 p.m. Tuesdays, the E-Block, uh, GFT Radio Network, 2 p.m. Thursdays, the GFT Radio. Oh, damn, I'm fucking this all the way up. Slow down, Hank. Thursday is WTNUPhilly.com. 12.30 on Thursdays, WTNUPhilly.com. I say podcast radio network 10 a.m. on Fridays and the THC radio network at 10 a.m. on Saturdays. Now, episode 56, you ready? You ready. (laughs) Shouts out to my man, Uncle Face, for this one. Would you rather be in a relationship or be in love? We have the guests go first here on How to Hustle Podcast. Okay. You want you going first? The guests. You want me go first? Okay, the guests go first. Well, so my, my thing is, why why we got to choose? Because that's why the concept we, of the show. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, but I'm just saying, like, we have we have this, like, idea that we have to choose between the two. Why not have both? Love and be in a relationship. And then, now I'm going to go to a different concept because I'm on a different journey. Um, I'm newly poly. So, um, okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> shout out to the poly community. I'm still learning things. I have a partner. Um, we, we chose to go on this journey together. And, you know, if I would have learned any of these things five years before, maybe I wouldn't receive it as much now because, you know, dealing with monogamous, you know, monogamous relationships over a period of time, you kind of, you got to relearn new things to receive it. So we've kind of been taught, oh, we want to get married. You want this white picket fence and all these things. Yeah, we want children and the husband and everything. And, but we never thought to think that, oh, we probably could still have these things um, if we were open-minded to have a poly situation. Because think about this. A lot of people in monogamy relationships, they honestly, they suppress who they are to satisfy the other person. You, do you agree with that a little bit? Absolutely. Okay, so if you were able to be free and be who you are and still have your partner. I believe partner, that was episode 52 where we talked about that exact topic. Oh, yeah? See, yeah. I told you I like to stop in the beginning, so it's going to take me a minute. Shout <laughs> out to the girls of what up, that. though. Yeah, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to listen to that because I'm still, like I said, I'm still learning. I'm still, uh, you know, learning the ropes. And, and, and what I'm learning is that in my city, a lot of people close-minded or you know, they not, um, they just can't wrap their mind around it. And it's okay, because it's not for everybody. If you're not on that wavelength, it's absolutely fine. But what I've come to the conclusion is, if I have a partner and we, in the, from the beginning, we communicated like, this is what we want to do. Um, and we understand, we have an understanding and we communicate, we're honest with each other from the jump. You won't have none of those issues that you usually will have in a monogamous situation. People cheat all the time but why is it considered cheating you know what i mean like when you're in a monogamous relationship it's like you you take away so many parts of you to satisfy the other person and um i just don't think that's okay we're, we're nobody's property you know what i mean like i just look at all things right, different hold now on. so Cause we, <laughs> all right because hold on we going way off the topic all right, my man, go ahead. The topic here, and I need you to make a choice out of these two choices here. 
Mm-hmm. Would you rather be in love? Because you could be in love and in your poly relationship, or you could yeah. just be in a relationship and in the poly situation. So opening the situation up to the poly situation, copy that gives us another dynamic and another avenue that we could use here. But these yeah. are the two options that you got. Pick one. In love or in a relationship? How can you not have love in a relationship? Is that's what I, maybe I'm just not. I'm just. If you're in a relationship, okay, let's just say you're in a relationship. Could be me and you talk. We ain't in yeah. no serious relationship. We just talking. You know what I'm saying? That's a relationship that we have. Would you rather have multiple people that you talk to, or would you rather be in love? Oh my God, he or she is my moon and stars. Or in your situation, like you said, we in a poly situation. Okay, them two people are my moon and my stars, and I can't be without them. It's a different, you, you dig what I'm saying? Like, it's a different situation there. Mm-hmm. Do you want to get serious or do you want to play around? Like, it's those type of things. But that's what I'm saying. Um, <clears throat> again, excuse me. Even having a partner, right now it's just us two until we find somebody else. Um, it's, it's, it's serious and we still can play around. Like, you got to look at, like, then probably this don't mean playing around. Like, you know what I mean? You can build foundations y'all it's a lot more into it and i think that's what people don't understand but i will say right, no. I would choose, wait 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 when i, I, threw, relationship. <laughs> when I threw playing around what i'm saying is when i talk about playing around i'm talking about having being in multiple different relationships outside of the poly situation because most people poly thing has become like a popular thing recently for me personally i'm muslim so like i've been knowing about this whole situation because this is the way things have gone here forever because mm-hmm. these are kind of the situations that you can have those different those things are different because they're not about just hey i wanted to have sex with these four or five different girls it was mm-hmm. you married these four or five different girls so that you could take care of them all if right. you can't take Absolutely. care of them equally then you can't have these five different chicks so Absolutely. i ain't saying like i'm coming from a place where i don't understand exactly where you're going with that situation but what i'm saying is you know the difference in, in when you're in the dating phase and you talk to these three guys you're not mm-hmm. really in a serious situation you can't be in a serious situation with three dudes at one time you can't be in a serious no. situation with three girls at one time. That's why I said, for instance, you would use, okay, me and Keisha is married. I love her. We're in love. And now we chose to bring in whomever else. Okay, that's one thing. And if mm-hmm. we talk about, I talked to two, three different people, whether that's a guy or a girl, I talked to a couple of different people. You can't be in love with three different people at the same time. Like, Even if you're married to three different people, I don't think you can be in love with all three of them at the same time. Um, I don't know. I think it's possible. I'm not, you're not, we're not saying like at that very moment, you, you know, love over time, it, you know, you fall in love, whatever. Um, I mean, I think it's possible. That's just, I think that you can, I think that you can, I think that you can love them all because you love people for different reasons. You got your one friend that you love because they're always loyal. You got your one friend that you love because you grew up together. Like there's different reasons and different ways to love people. Loving somebody and being in love with somebody is two different things. Absolutely. I agree. So you said now you was picking a relationship, though. Go ahead and break that one down for us. So again, I was forced to pick that. <laughs> yes, you. Yes, gun to your back. <laughs> okay. Was, Hands on the wall, gun to your back. I was, I don't know. Like again, so you are, okay? So I have to think in the way of I don't know how to think now because my like I say my situation changed so. We're talking about relationship-wise as far as in a monogamous sense? How do you, in fact, answer it Answer it the way that you want to answer it. Just make sure you pick one of them. <laughs> so, again, I absolutely... Like I said, you, you and your dude can be in love with each other, correct? Y'all yeah. are in love with each other. And then we say, okay, look, for our relationship to go where we want it to go, for it to prosper and for it to be the best for us, I think we should bring in blank. Now, do you would you rather pick the situation where you and this guy are in a relationship where y'all love each other, but y'all also understand that we need to step outside of this situation and bring somebody else into it? Or would you rather be in a situation where you talk to two, three different guys? Because if you're talking to these two or three different guys, you're not in love with any of them, is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I would choose A. Okay. Now explain <laughs> to us why you're choosing A. Because I'm naturally a person that just want a partner. I don't really care to have multiple partners, if that makes sense. I'm like, again, I'm rewiring my brain because I'm like, I'm 35. So over, just think about my adult life. I've, all I've known is this other side. 
even though poly's been around forever like people keep thinking like this is new it's been around forever we just have been new in the mainstream sense like yeah yeah but it's been around yeah so like again you do research you'll see it's been around forever but um you know again i would love to have a partner and i don't mind uh having another partner because in my mind now i'm thinking about stability i'm thinking about the other side of, of building and, and family and things like that like to me that's that's normal it's like i absolutely would love that dynamic so does that answer it good enough i mean for me the married man this is a difficult and chronic crazy answer that i'm gonna give because i would much rather personally to have just been in relationships instead of like being in love because once you get to in love you got to have so much acceptance like you just were saying like i said this did this on the episode what up though you have mm -hmm. to accept the fact that you have to lose a bit of yourself you have to adjust a bit of who you are because you now got to intertwine that in with a whole other person then if when you're dealing with that other person I, eventually most in most cases y'all have kids so now you got to deal with adjusting yourself again because now having child number one you should become a whole different person because now this is like a it's like a uh kids are like a grenade that blows up the entire village and everything that you saw and knew before the child got here is gone yeah so now <laughs> imagine now you do that with twins so that means double the everything that you had to do with one child now you have a third child so you got to look at it like you put up with so much stuff that you just don't even want to deal with stuff that you just say all right i would do it because i love her because i love them because I love our situation, because I love our dynamic. Not even the meaning of love that you might have for this person, but for me, it would be like anybody I think would choose like the freedom to get up and walk the hell away if I want to walk away. The mm -hmm. freedom to go. I might not want I might not want to come out today. I might just want to sit in the house and play Madden all day. Mm -hmm. When you got kids, you ain't got those type of options. You mm -hmm. got to get to work. You got to make sure that they ate. You got to make sure that the lights is on. Not saying that you got the lights off just because you're chilling all day today. But mm -hmm. It involves so much responsibility on you, the man and the woman, because let's not even try to, you know, decipher between those two different situations. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Responsibility on you when you have the responsibility of other people. Mm -hmm. So if anybody I believe had like really like the choice to do what they wanted to do, I don't think anybody would ever be in a relationship if like, like in a serious relationship that way because it puts so much of a burden on you and some people are really to handle those burdens and some people some people want to do that and go that way with about their life and that's perfectly fine like i said i'm married i've been married for should be six years in july mm -hmm. so i'm not even saying like to demean my situation or like oh god i'm here against my will type thing i don't want nobody to hear this and think that right, right? if i think anybody would choose the freedom to do whatever it is that they wanted to do versus the constraints of like you're talking about with the this is how you got to think of the way that you did mm -hmm. uh the, the restrictions that being in a relationship kind of puts on you mm -hmm. i agree with everything you said that's true but it's like at what point do you loosen some of the restrictions so not even about the kids situation kids are really different that you, you can't change that dynamic but when it comes to your partner, it's like a lot of times we don't communicate what we want, what we truly want. We can't be honest. I'm like, how can you not be honest with the person you chose to be with? And that's what I'm learning. A lot of people do not lead with honesty and communication. They do it. Some people do it the best they can. This but, is something um, that's come up on like the last three or four episodes. Yeah. People don't make the right assessment of their self. If I'm lying to me when I look in the mirror, then how the hell I'm gonna tell you the truth? Exactly. So, it's always, it always says start with self. I, I live yeah. by that. I've learned that over the last, I'll just keep saying the last five years, I've been working on myself. I've been, you know, clearing my energy, praying, everything. Like I've literally did the self work and I'm still doing it every day. I don't think it's never gonna stop. You have to, people think, oh, then you start getting all these buses, you good. No, you gotta do the self work every day. And you got to change that energy. You wonder why, oh, this not working out for me. Or that's not working. You got to change your energy and your mindset because if you keep doing the same thing, you get the same results. So I think that's the same with relationships. Like you, you just got to learn how to, um, I guess before you get on, you got to do the self-work. But a lot of people don't do that. And we know that, in our society, especially in our community. 
It's I mean, like you were just saying, though, where people started off with a lie. People started yeah. off with a problem because they don't know. you either one, don't know what you want, two, don't even know what you're looking for, mm-hmm. and three, you're still not ready to be in that situation. Mm-hmm. People don't even know when to have those conversations, how to have those conversations. Somebody might ask you a, ask you questions that you never even thought of. Exactly. Like, are you even equipped to answer these questions? And if you're not equipped to answer these questions and take this person, uh, if you're not equipped to have this person and say like, uh, I'm, I'm going to speak for her, she's going to speak for me, and we're going to be one and speak for each other type of thing. Or like, if you're not, some people ain't equipped to do it. Like everybody's not meant to get married. Everybody's not meant to be in a long-term relationship. Some people are just, you know, here for the moment. <laughs> no, that's real. That and is that's real. Fun, but, it's real. but the problem be people will be put in a just for the moment person into a husband or a wife type situation when that's not what they're built for. You gotta recognize these things and have these real conversations with people before you just end up with the wrong person and now it's 20, 30, 40 years later and it's like, I don't even like her. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> she just got pregnant and now like I kind of got I stuck know. with her. I know, I know, man. We it's it's a lot of work that need to be done. Um, but I think having these type of combos really is helping people more than hurting. Even though I don't take everything I see on social media and like run with it, like, oh, I'm gonna do this. No. Take it with a grain of salt and you get what well, entertainment. You take it as that. Yeah, take it what you can get from <laughs> it. But you, you know, I think just this, this continuing these type of conversations is really helping. I've seen more positive than negative anyway. So me and my wife had so many different conversations, like religion, how you gonna raise your kids, where you want to raise your kids, do you even want kids? Mm-hmm. How many do you want? We had all of those different conversations in the talking stage, right? So that once you get pregnant, it's like, oh my god, what are we gonna do? No, nah, we already know what we're gonna do. Once mm-hmm. you get to be a little older, and it's like, well, what are we gonna do? We know what we're gonna do. We have a game plan. We talked about this. We thought mm-hmm. about it. Like we didn't just treat this like a situation where it was like, oh man, she thinks this and I think that. Now we're gonna constantly butt heads and tell you now you got a child that's watching your butt heads. So then mm-hmm. this child comes up thinking button heads is the way to go because this is what my mom and my dad always did. Mm-hmm. That's what happens when you had a shaky foundation to start with. When we didn't come to an even accord and understand what the fuck it was that we was trying to do here. No, no, that's real. That's real. I understand. Like I said, I know this is going to be weird for people because I'm married. And like I said, love my wife and all of that. Love my kids. But um, again, if you had to make the selfish choice, if you had to make the choice, of like, which one would you really want to do? To be honest about that situation, which most people ain't going to never be honest about these different situations. But it's like, why is it considered selfish, though? If it's fulfilling you. Now, again, I'm not talking about the kids because that's you can't change that, right? That's the well, that's it right there. Go. That's it right there. You got kids? Yeah, I have two. Once you have, I got two too. Damn. Um, and I'm about to turn thirty five. Um, once Uh-oh. you have kids, it's all about them. The decisions that you have have to be about what's best for them, though. Absolutely. How is this going to benefit them, though? I can't do shit like have. I blew an income tax check in a weekend. Okay. Uh uh-uh. uh. A weekend. Me and my cousin went to a couple of parties, and <laughs> that was that. You can't yeah. do shit like that when you got kids, though. When somebody nah, comes to you say, "Mommy or Daddy, what's for dinner tonight?" Nah, you can't yeah, make them type of decisions. That's why I say it's more of a selfish decision because you got some people out there who are going, "Yep, I got my income tax. I'm about to go run it back. I'm about to go run it up on myself." Sure. This one's yeah, hair ain't. Good. This one ain't had no new sneaks. And some people move like that. And if that's what you do, I mean, that's what you do. Mm-hmm. I can't relate. You're saying personally. Never. <laughs> that's how some but that's how some niggas move. Yeah, I know. I know. We got a lot of work to do. I think again, continue to have these type of conversations. Um not being afraid of what other people is gonna think or say. Um it you know, we need it in the black community. You know what I mean? I, that's the only community I can relate to. So it's like I, I've seen it. I've seen it all. It's, it's for me, I've you know I was really sheltered all my life, honestly, um, and always been in the show. But you know, I've seen things, and it's like a lot of things go you know left unsaid, and uh, we just ignore it in the black community. You know what I mean? Again, this go back to relationship stuff. 
So you like you see the cheating, you see people getting divorced, the financial issues, and just all types of stuff. And it's like, man, look, when is it going to stop? Where do we start? You know what I mean? So again, these conversations are, are well needed for people who may not even uh, be able to have these conversations with family members or even, like I say, even their own partner. So I appreciate you again doing so. But these conversations have to be kept honest. Yes, 100% honest, you know what I'm saying. Uh, some conversations are more difficult than others. And, Rip the band off, and <laughs> if some situations, though, you're not ready to have that conversation, don't just blurt out some shit without actually thinking about what you're going to say before you say it. Yeah. Because this is something that I said on last week's episode uh, with Q. Shout out to Q Lewis. Uh, <laughs> once you say it, it's said. Yeah. Once it's out yeah. there, it's out you there. stand on it. Yeah. You can apologize and you can, I didn't mean it and all of that, but ultimately that other person always understands that you said this or you feel like that. Yeah, yeah. And they can choose to either move on or they can choose to shatter and damage our whole relationship and our whole situation. Because it takes one bad comment to fuck up 30 years of your relationship. But, um, all right, let's switch it up a little bit now. We can dive a little bit to you. How long have you been doing the podcast? I literally started, I've been, I've been, I apologize. I've been um, working on it since January, 2021, and I didn't publish it until September of 2021. So I literally have one season. I'm starting this new segment, um, starting actually next week, and I'm recording some episodes tomorrow. So I'm going to release it and uh, start, you know, um, talking about that topic more. It's, I mean, it's, it is going to be about poly. I'm just, I'll just say that, but it's going, it's going to be more interesting. I have different uh, guest hosts uh, from different places, and we're just going to do, you know, different episodes and just bring more enlightenment to the community so they can understand more of what poly is and uh, just have an open conversation. So it's going to be dope. What did the nine months of preparation help you do with the podcast? Oh my goodness! Um, it just, I, like I said, I was mainly doing research because it was new to me. I've always wanted to do something else and I just couldn't, you know, my, my background was mainly like, you know, just government and law, stuff like that. And I'm like, I just need an outlet. <laughs> I need something, I listen to audiobooks all the time, you know, different podcasts and stuff. And I was like, let me just see if this, how I can do this. Let me, let me, let me do some research. So that's what I did. I just did research and then I, you know, I decided that this is something I'm passionate about. I'm always a person that's behind the scenes. So usually my face is not out there. I'm usually, you know, like some of the business person I'm behind uh, the scenes all the time. So I just like doing this and I, you know, I really enjoy it. I'm passionate about it. Um, and I'm just looking forward to the future and, and, and see what other topics I can come up with that's, you know, referring to dating. All right. See, I asked you that question because personally, I left yeah. my old podcast in August of 2020. And yeah. I started going How to Hustle February 1st of 21. So I know what I did in that time frame to build the situation and the mm -hmm. that's why I asked you that because a lot of people don't do that homework before yeah. they just push play on the joint or before they push record. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. just go, I got four topics and I'm about to knock out all four of these episodes and mm -hmm. then they don't have anything by episode five, six, seven, eight. Now their Instagram page is just sitting there and they had a post in a year and a half. Oh yeah, I've seen that because too. <laughs> I've seen people it. There's don't. no judgment because sometimes people get stagnant. You can't get stagnant. There's nothing wrong with that. But, um, you know, but everybody got their own timeline. But even the same situation like uh, that we're talking about here. Yeah. We both took the time to build the situation up, to not have four <laughs> topics and be shot your load now. Right. I had two radio stations, 20 guests, and I don't even know how many topics already lined up before I had a logo or Instagram page. Mm, yeah. So, oh, this book that's right what here? I'm Got all my topics. <laughs> I got oh, man, yeah. topics. It's text thread that says hype right here. Man, my... Look, I'm ready. I'm ready. This, 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 this. I never thought I'd be so passionate about something like this. Just, you know, have my voice heard and have people to be able to be, you know, relate to me and get different perspectives. Like this is, this is dope. In the community, the podcast community is dope. I came, you know, came across a lot of great people that's serious about their craft. And, you know, I'm just, like I said, I'm just ready to collab with more people, open-minded people you know, that's just ready to have this, uh, this, this conversation. So yeah, those, 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 those months, I actually did a lot of research. Like I said, I have pages and pages full of notes 
And this actually opened avenues, new avenues for me because I'm opening my own studio. It's actually in the works right now, like literally at the second while we're sitting. <laughs> like it, it should have been, uh, well, it will be finished hopefully by next week. That's the goal. So I'm gonna have an actual end. For, so this, that's gonna change the whole dynamic of, you know, having to do Zooms and all that stuff. But I can still do that, which is cool, but I wanna be able to have people be able to come in. And uh, that's, that's one avenue that um, I'm working on. Uh, that's helped me out. And, I'm, you know, I do like little events and I hate saying little, I didn't mean to say that. Take that back. I do events. <laughs> I, was, I was about uh, to jump on your ass about that. That's one of the things that I hate people always say. Oh, your little podcast. Ain't shit, shit little about my situation. You know I'm I'm saying? <laughs> people always try to throw that little jab in there at you. Don't never let them do that to you. I know, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. But I caught it, though, you know. But I'm doing big that. things. Put it like this I'm doing big things. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, before we let you go, appreciate yeah. you coming on the Hustle Podcast. We're hype episode 56. Uh, let everybody know when is season two dropping and when, where can they follow you? So you can follow me on Instagram. I'm, well, I'm on all the platforms, but Instagram is the main one I'm really interactive with. It's dating one one underscore be more edition. Um, the new, se- um, new season is going to start March 7th. So on a Monday. I'm going to drop it on March 7th. Um, and again, it's a, it's a segment with me about poly and bringing more information to the community about the, you know, the poly community. So that's what I'm yeah, working so, on. Right so that means last week then, this, uh, this season season two dropped for you. Yes. <laughs> that's why I was All like, right. I got to do this right now because I know I'm going to be mad busy, man. <laughs> like, I want to keep pushing you off. I'm like, I got to get on here. I got to make the sacrifice. I got <laughs> Listen, you see, you caught a pre-show call for H2H cleaning job. <laughs> you I know, right? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm always going. But I appreciate I know, you coming man. on. Appreciate everybody hitting the button. That was episode 56. We are out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. <laughs>